Get ready as Apostle Joshua Selman takes us on a journey. Prepare your heart for a mighty visitation. With Jesus' joy, let us welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Your power and your wisdom Till the nations see Jesus lifted up Exalted, I receive, I manifest Your power and your wisdom Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. I, 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 I. I want you to find a brand neighbor in just one or two minutes. You are going to prophesy that there shall be no loss. I make it a declaration of faith. There shall be no loss. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I make declarations by faith that there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. The sound of mourning shall not be heard around your tent. Prophesy over someone. There shall be no loss. Here in this prophetic service, we make declarations over your life, over your destiny, over your Christian experience. The Bible says the path of the justice as a shining light that shines ever brighter, more and more, even unto the perfect day. Take a minute to make prophetic declarations. There shall be no loss. It says an angel appeared before me. And as such, there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. The restorer is restoring. The restorer is restoring. The restorer is making all things new. It says, Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. There shall be no loss. Prophesy it upon yourself, prophesy it upon your neighbor. From September to October to November to December, I decree and declare it's from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated for a few minutes. I'd like you to be very sensitive. Be very, very sensitive. There shall be no loss. I heard this word again and again and again. There shall be no loss. For someone who has chosen to be a receiver tonight, I speak it over you. There shall be no loss. In the name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration of darkness programming bad news for your family, for your children, in the name that is above all names, we declare it is averted by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. We had a session in the morning and let me encourage those of us who were not here. Please do take some time to listen to uh, the morning session. It's very, very important that you pay attention. We 
spoke a bit about commanding restoration using the force of strategic prayer. I said a few things in the morning. We considered for a reference Philippians 1 and verse 19. You still remember? He says, and I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. I know that this shall turn to my salvation. And I said a few things that prayer as a strategic weapon for commanding respiration um, does four things. Number one, I said that prayer activates the ministry of angels. Number two, that prayer allows you to exercise your will, your power to choose. It says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified, that I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, and I advise you that you choose life so that you and your seed will live. The Bible says that um, you declare so that you are justified. Number three, we said that prayer allows you to receive counsel and direction from the Holy Spirit. Still remember? Yes. The Bible says, as they prayed, lifting up their hands in thanksgiving, the Holy Ghost spoke to them and said, separate me Barnabas and Saul. Separate me Barnabas and Saul. That when you take the time to engage in prayer, strategic prayer, you deploy the wisdom of the Spirit and with it would come direction. Number four, we said that prayer activates discernment with respect to its ability to bring restoration. It activates discernment, helping us to escape satanic traps. Remember? Yes, that it was on account of that ability to discern, even through a dream, that the life of Jesus was spared because Herod intended to find where Jesus was so that he would kill him. But the Bible says that the angel appeared and told Joseph and Mary, he said, to depart that there are people who seek the life of the child. And when Herod died, it came again that they that seek the life of your child are now dead, you can walk free. And that many people step into calamities in disguise because they lack the faculty, the fortitude for discernment. And so tonight we are looking as a prophetic service at there shall be no loss. Let me define for you what it means to lose. We are dealing with the subject of losing and losses. It will be very brief and then we'll begin to pray. I found very interesting definitions as I was searching to find what it means to lose. Number one, the first definition the dictionary provided me is to fail to win. To fail to win. To fail to win. That you lose when you fail to win. I thought losses just have to do with the disappearance of things. But that the absence of victory is also an indication of losses. Hallelujah. Let's honor Pastor Yemi David, PFN chairman for Lagos. The Lord bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Another definition, to lose means to be unable to find. To be unable to find. The inability to find whatever it is that you once had. The inability to find. To lose, thirdly, means to stop having, listen, or owning something. To stop having or owning something because it has been taken away from you, either accidentally or intentionally. To lose means to stop being a possessor of anything at all. And the reason is because it has been taken away from you, either accidentally or on purpose. Ah, everything that left your hand and your destiny that should not have left in the name of Jesus and even at this prophetic service it will gravitate back to your destiny <laughs> hallelujah to lose means to fail to win it means to be unable to find and then a more important definition is to stop having to stop owning to stop being a possessor of something because it has been taken away from you, either by accident or purposely. Now, my assignment tonight as a church before we pray 
is to give you very quickly six reasons why losses happen in the lives of believers. It's important in dealing with the subject of restoration, it's important for us to know that restoration even happens because losses would have happened. If there's no loss, there would not be need for restoration. Are we together now? Six reasons. Walk with me very quickly. Number one, the first reason why believers experience losses is lack of discernment. Lack of discernment. Lack of discernment. Very powerful. Lack of discernment. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Lack of discernment. It says, therefore, we ought to give a more earnest heed to the things we have heard. Hear me? Lest at any time we should let them sleep. That means whatever you hear, there are forces also contending for it. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says that when the sower sows the word, that the enemy comes and attempts to steal that word. Satan is a thief. Lack of discernment has made many other people to, pro, to abort prophetic things and prophetic seasons. Hallelujah. Lack of discernment. Very quickly, let me give you number two. I have so many scriptures here, but I'm not sure I have the liberty. Maybe I should give you two more scriptures. I like to speak scripture. Um, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 for reference. And then Ezekiel 12, 1 to 2. Ezekiel 12, 1 to 2. Now, watch this. Let's, let's do Isaiah 1 and verse 3. Please read it together if you're a child of God. Ready? One to go. The ox knoweth his owner and has his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not consider. They lack discernment, so they do not consider seasons. They do not consider things. They lose things because they do not have the faculty of discernment number two very quickly the second reason why believers lose in this kingdom is carelessness 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 hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 carelessness are you ready to read with me don't be tired it's a prophetic service we're all speaking by the spirit one to go how shall we escape if we neglect so great one more time, the A part. How shall we escape? The Bible is talking of negligence. It's talking of carelessness. There are many believers who are careless with their lives, careless with the things that God has given to them. There's a story that has inspired me and it's been so instructive. Let me read it out for you. Judges chapter 11 from verse 30 to 35 a, a very classic description of what carelessness can do to a believer are you ready now i don't want to give you the the pretext and bore you with it but jephthah went to fight a battle and he vowed a vow and he said lord if you will give me victory listen god did not ask him by himself he said if you will give me victory as i return home the first thing I see in front of my door, I will sacrifice. Say carelessness. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon to my hands, uh -huh, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the door of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, surely shall be the Lord's and I will offer it up as a bond offering. Next verse. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them and the Lord delivered them into his hands. Reading to 35. And he smote them from all of those places, destroyed everything and he subdued, they were subdued before the children of Israel. Verse 34. The Bible says, And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house listen 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 and behold his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dancing and she was his only child beside her he had neither son nor daughter verse 35 and it came to pass when he saw her 
that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot go back. Say carelessness. There are many believers who are victims of ill speakings. There are many people who have brought self-inflicted woes upon their lives because of careless use of words. Are we together now? One of the ways to demonstrate perfection and maturity in the spirit is the excellency of your communication. The Bible says, and if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man. The word perfect there means you have attained unto maturity. One of the indices to measure maturity according to Paul's rendition in um, 1 Corinthians 13 is your speaking. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I understood like a child. He says, but now that I'm a man, I lay aside these childish things. Are we together? Some of you do not realize that as you get up in the morning and program woes over yourself, misusing your ability to speak. Do I, I don't know this season, in fact, Nigeria self. Let's just see one day. And, and we say a lot of things emotionally consoling but we are programming disaster in the spirit are we together now yeah. carelessness i'm praying for someone here any trouble that you got into as a result of the misuse of words in the name of jesus may the mercy of god speak for you it was job that said the thing that i feared most has come upon me I do not believe it happens just because he thought it. It is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Why does it look like I'm going to fail this year? And you keep saying it and keep programming it. The realm of the spirit does not care. The same way if I jump here by mistake, gravity does not consider that it was a mistake. It considers that it was an intentional act. And I will pay for it even though it was a mistake. Hallelujah. Sad experience, but when planes are about to crash, you think gravity will consider that there was something wrong with the aircraft. Gravity keeps supporting as it was designed to, even though God's creation is going to die. Hallelujah. I want you to know that in this kingdom we reign through the abundance of the words that we speak. It says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. We consider that in the morning. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, let the lifted of the Lord let the blessed of the Lord let the anointed of the Lord the same way people destroy themselves by saying so by saying so by saying so carelessness number three very quickly why do believers experience losses ignorance of spiritual laws ignorance of the laws that govern life and destiny ignorance ignorance the third reason why believers experience losses is ignorance please look up look up household of david body of christ lend me your attention for one minute do not make a mistake to believe that life just functions without a system that coordinates it as haphazard as, as life looks it is an interplay of spiritual laws are we together now that if people don't just rise people don't just go down help us don't just come trouble does not just come there are laws that govern every outcome in the believers life good or bad your assignment is that through strategic mentorship the ministry of the teaching priest you are open to the variety of the kingdom laws the bible calls them the mysteries of the kingdom these are the keys that grant you dominion in experience job chapter 38 and verse 33 please let's read it from niv or nlt i even prefer nlt if we can have that ignorance of the laws of the spirit the laws of the kingdom let's read it together are you ready one to go do you know the laws of the universe can you use them to regulate the earth it's a question God was asking Job. KJV says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? 
it says canst thou establish the dominion using those ordinances favor does not just happen trouble does not just happen are we together now yes the power of witchcraft does not just prevail arbitrarily no the blessing does not just happen they are regulated by laws ministry does not just grow stagnation does not just happen i am saying every outcome in your life whether you know it or not there are spiritual laws so when you see a believer's life invincible a life worthy of emulation it is not just the love of god that is the difference for the same lord is rich unto all those that call upon him the difference is that for one they have laid hold on eternal life in experience by engaging the laws that produce profit that produce victory ephesians 4 and verse 18 back to kjv thank you it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god that is in them through the ignorance the blindness of their minds i'm praying for someone let the season of ignorance come to end in your life. One of the indices to measure maturity as a believer is not just your knowledge of God, but the degree to which you have accessed in experience the mysteries of the kingdom and that you know how to engage them for your profiting. If I ask you today, tell me as a believer, how we experience favor can you defend that understanding if i tell you how do we command restoration can you defend that understanding you see and, and i say this with every sense of responsibility um we must begin to vet the basis of our confidence as believers let it not just be that we are priding over longevity of stay in church we must probe sincerely whether we are laying hold onto the truths that make for victory you can be 10 years in a church and that is wonderful but it is the degree to which you have access light that is the degree to which you will arise and you will shine are we together that you've been sitting for a long time does not automatically get you up the man who was seated at get Bethesda Bethesda I'm sure he thought that he would not maybe after one year but it went to 38 years if Jesus did not come to the rescue he would have died there it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i'm praying for someone the grace to contend for light to know the laws that control the outcomes you desire i declare may god open your eyes to know them it was apostle peter who taught us and here's what he said according as his divine power has given us how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness he says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue he says whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust light john 1 5 the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah acts chapter 20 and verse 32 i believe it says and now brethren i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified listen to me life will not just happen to your favor automatically no dominion is a product of knowing and engaging light there is a body of truth that is connected to every result you desire apostle i desire promotion don't just desire the outcome you must learn the body of light that has been allocated for that outcome in the spirit i desire to excel in ministry do you know the keys that are responsible that make for excellence you see when you understand the laws of the spirit your confidence will not be on your results it will be on the fact that you have capacity to reproduce it it is dangerous to come into an experience that you cannot defend through understanding you will be afraid of your own result how did you arrive here 
well i know that i engage all kinds of laws i don't even know which one worked the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully i'm praying that in this church and for as many who have come for this conference that between now and the end of the year in the name of jesus you will get into a level of mastery mastery with the intelligence and the mastery of a consultant you can diagnose another believer's condition and recommend with intelligence what spiritual principle he was missing and what needs to be added when you speak to a consultant while you are shouting and saying i have headache stomach ache and all of that he's just smiling because in the midst of the frailty of your explanation he has been trained to decipher certain things and with precision even though he's not a prophet he can tell you uh, take this take this two in the morning three in the afternoon it's up to you to obey to your victory or disobey and pay the price and sometimes he will not even call you to check up it's not carelessness it's confidence he knows it will work while you are taking the first shot the first injection you are rolling and say this thing's not working he says no don't worry trust the recommendation after three days you get up you're running around praying football here and there i'm praying for you again in the name of jesus where the devil has cheated you because of the bankruptcy of light where you have blamed god for things you should not blame god for i'm praying may your eyes be open to find light and speaking about light, let me digress for a minute and say this pastor shola the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man not every light is true light you know that light is true in its ability to drive darkness any information you have and you cannot show the darkness it drove is a waste of time it's not true light did you get what i said yeah there is light that can look like a semblance of light but it may not produce power it says that was the true light and if it is true light the bible says it lighted how many people every man light is not for some men it's not for men of god if it's light that came from god it is profitable for every destiny that engages it that was the true light there are many believers with all due respect priding over spiritual information that does not sustain the power to drive darkness you use it for your finances, it does not work. You use it for your health, it does not work. You use it for ministry, it does not work. It's time to leave the lesser light or no light at all in deception. Are we together now? He made two great lights. He made it. Two great lights. And those lights have dominion within them. One to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. If you are to rule in the day and the night, you must have that light too. The light he made. Who is learning? That the third reason why people experience losses is ignorance of the laws of the spirit, ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. Let me give you number four quickly. Why do believers experience losses? Number four, are you ready for this? Abuse and misuse. Matthew chapter 25, 14 to 30. It's a long read. I won't bother going there. Abuse and misuse. Classically demonstrated in the parable of the talent. Remember that parable? The Bible says he gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two talent. He gave unto one one and then he went away. The Bible says the guy with five went and traded it and had five more, making ten. The guy with two went and traded it and had two, making four. But our lesson is from this, our man who had only one talent. You see that now. The Bible says the guy was angry. Do you know why the master rebuked him? He had two people in front of him to learn from. There was no excuse for failure. The guy whose failure would have been justified was the guy with five because there was nobody to teach him. The guy with two most likely learned from the guy with five because their results show they produce after their kind. The guy who had one would have come with humility to learn. I'm sure the master would have given them more from where he got the first one. But he was angry at the size of what he was given. And 
with carelessness and misuse. And then when the master came, commended the two, look his arrogance. He says, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you did not sow. And so I, uh, you like to gather where you have not planted. And so instead of wasting your talent, I decided to bury it. Here it is. And when he collected it, he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant. Wicked and lazy, careless servant. He says, you know that I will reap where I do not sow. You would have at least put it in the bank so that I will get some interest from it. Are we together? Let me tell you this. Everything God gives you that you misuse and you abuse will be taken away from you. I hate to say this, but not all losses are demonic. There are losses that are as a result of God's own system of managing the casualty you are becoming. So he would rather withdraw that blessing and have you learn some things so that those that follow you will not be destroyed by your carelessness. Are we together now? It is dangerous for people to misuse and abuse and still make progress. Because the people you mentor will be mentored after that misuse. There are people who have misused opportunities, abused relationships. Are we together? Certain doors, for some of us, there are doors that have been closed now. It's not necessarily demonic. Is that you abuse those opportunities. God granted you access, access that by your qualification you should not have had. And he granted you access to the ears and the hands of great people. And when you saw people who were by far higher than you, meeting and discussing destiny, national things, you came in with a lot of abuse and misuse. So you called the CEO and said, um, I'm happy to know you are my father's friend. And the man said, who is this? I'm the son of that man who came to your office. Uh -huh, how can I help you? I just want to greet you. you, were, you were, your cloth was nice. And the man says, what is this? And because of that, he closes a door for your father. He said, I gave you a number and you gave it to your child. If he does not know the value of sacrifice, then start again as you learn. Who is learning? There are people who, let me tell you, every time a door closes towards you, the key is honor. Dishonor is what would have closed that door. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. I want you to look back. Who could help you before that is not willing to help you now? Dishonor was a bridge between you and that tragedy. And you allowed, you crossed that bridge wrongly and now you are paying for it. Are we together? You keep doors open by the practice of honor. I hope God is speaking to you. You do not honor the principles that brought you the anointing and you are careless, you misuse, you abuse it. God grants you strategic people, you abuse it. And I'm saying this with all due respect, even to ministers of the gospel. God will trust you with great members, wonderful people, exceptional people. You abuse that privilege, you pay the price again. The first time God will chisel the stones for you. But the second time, Moses, you will use your own hand. And then you will see that what you call favor is not cheap. For someone, you came to church to learn wisdom. There are relationships you need to quickly go and mend. Because God has scheduled your lifting through those relationships. But abuse and misuse. You get into a place and you meet someone and while they are discussing, all you are doing is trying to take a selfie. You just want to capture their faces so that you will say you were there. And whilst unknown to you, all those who can help you are watching you. And you show by your ignorance that you are not truly ready for that realm. They exit you out with honor and you stay there for a long time. Hallelujah. Never abuse opportunities. Never abuse privileges. Never misuse it. It is often said that familiarity breeds contempt. It is true. It shouldn't be. Hallelujah. Shouldn't be. Never get used to greatness. Never. There are people who are so familiar with God have come again. Oh God. 
and that familiarity robs you of an opportunity for the more that is in God. Again, I pray for someone. It's a prophetic service tonight. By the power of the Holy Spirit, every door that has closed, you had people, you had a plethora of helpers. You could call any of them and they would respond. But now you notice they are not willing to pick your call. Your, your abuse and misuse has gotten to their ears. I pray for you. By mercy, may my God restore. I say it again. By mercy, may my God restore. May my God restore. May my God restore relationships. May my God restore opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Have you heard a man say, I used to know A and B and C. But now I cannot have access to them. That's not an encouraging statement. How do you know a man who is rising and not be there when they are in the palace? What happened on the way? Abuse and misuse. Turn to someone by your left and right. Say, I honor you and the grace of God on your life. One more time. Say it. I honor you and the grace of God on your life. For one last time. I honor you. Some of you feel like entering the ground because you are not used to being that humble. You mean I'm turning to someone I don't know? Learn it all so that life does not punish you. And you see, life is a patient teacher. Your tears notwithstanding. If it teaches you the lesson and you don't learn, it will use another formula. But as far as rising is concerned, you must pass that exam. Hmm. Who is learning? You see that this is how to approach subjects like this so that we don't just pray and shout and say amen and return back disappointed. Victory is a product of light. Light, illumination. That when you receive it, then you can engage by faith. Are we together? Abuse of your health. There are people, you've, I think I've shared my testimony in this church many years ago. Uh, the Lord had to caution me. So during my retreat, I take various aspects of my life and then I gauge what progress I've made. And perhaps, let me say this with all due respect, use this to some of our elderly ones. Maybe we can learn a lesson from this story. For three years in a row, I found out that my health was the worst performing area. It was not like I was particularly sick. But I knew that I was being careless with my health. And I was blaming the gospel for that carelessness. Are we together? And in that place of retreat, the Lord cautioned me that part of the principles for longevity is to choose life. Choose life means make pro-life decisions. If you keep destroying this body, the only one you are given per lifetime, you will cut short no matter how anointed you are. One day you will cut short that body. And I learned that lesson. I vowed a vow in that place of retreat. I said, Satan, I won't die. You. I've received the instruction and I will walk with it. What do I need to drive out of my life? Lord, I receive grace. I drive this drink. Save Johnny. I love you. I miss you, but be gone for good. I intend to live long. Who is understanding me? I remember one day they made one kind of bitter drink for me that looks like um, it's his punishment. They said he's healthy. I said, what is all this one now? I have a sweet tooth. What do I do with this sweet tooth? Now blame God for giving it to me. They said, drink it. I drank it. I said, oh God, you are watching me making pro-life decisions. Let me not see any spirit of death near my corridor. You are seeing me taking life. There is no death in my pot. So you cannot, you know, death resides in the pot. The sons of the prophet said there is death in the pot. In many homes, there is still death in the pot. Get death out of your pot. Go back home this night and get death out of your pot. Get it out of your kitchen. Drive it far from your house. Someone say, I shall not die. Let the devil hear you say, I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Abuse and misuse. I learned my lesson that day. And to God be the glory for that lesson. Are we together? I wonder what else you are abusing. The grace of God upon your life, you can abuse it. Opportunities that God has sent to you. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you again. That any opportunity that has passed because of abuse, because of misuse, tonight, in this prophetic service, may the God of all grace gravitate it back to your life. 
Hallelujah. If you're learning, say amen. amen. Let's do number five. The fifth biblical reason why believers can experience losses. Are you ready? Tests and trials. Tests and trials. Write for reference Job chapter 1, 9 to 22. We'll not read that. It's a long read. Just write for reference. Job 1, 9 to 22. But the scripture we'll read now is James chapter 1. Please give us 2 to 3. Apostle James is bringing perspective to us as to the fact that believers can go through tests and trials. My brethren, who is he speaking to? Come on, talk to me. Who is he speaking to? He says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, I like this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Let's try verse 4. It says, and let patience have a perfect work that ye might be mature and entire, wanting nothing. While it may not be easy for us to admit, let me tell you the truth. It takes tests and trials at the examinations that we write that promote us to the next level in destiny and in the spirit. There is no school that promotes any student without writing an exam. No matter how brilliant that student is, there's something they call double promotion. I don't know if they still practice it, but no matter how double or triple, the student must still write exams. Wayek does not care how you got there. Even if they promoted you five times, there is an exam. If you do not pass, you cannot move from elementary to high school or secondary, as we call it, to college or whatever it is. Destiny, life has its exams, tests and trials. It tries your faith. Here is where you learn pain as a gift. That there is a gift that destiny can give you called pain. Not every dimension of pain is destructive. There is something called the gift of pain. Biologically, if you lose the sensory perception to detect pain, you are in trouble. Because you can be in the midst of fire and not know. Pain can be a healthy indicator. Pain sometimes is a letter from your future to your today telling you I am there but this version of you cannot get there. Who is understanding that? For someone you are in pain right now and you've not been able to have interpretation of why you are in that season of pain. Among many interpretations it could be that your tomorrow is writing you a letter that I am there but this version of you cannot arrive there. So it's a call for growth. I was teaching my people and I told them something, Pastor Shola, that many of the prayer requests we write in the body of Christ were supposed to come naturally through growth. There are many things we pray about that were not designed in God's economy to be prayer requests. The fact that we need them is proof that we are not growing because in the presence of growth, there are things mandated by the wisdom of God to gravitate to your life. Are we together? There are many, many answers that does not come just by laying hands, by falling down, by shouting. It comes by receiving the doing grace, the grace that makes for growth. Are we together? Father, give me, and you mention a very ambitious amount, one million dollars, $2 million and God says I love you too much to risk your tomorrow with that kind of blessing so I rather res reserve it and train you until you pass that test the test of faithfulness the test of loving God more than money and so God can give you 10 million naira and like Abraham one day he will say so it and you will cast that spirit and cast it and say it can't be God. God cannot know what is happening in Nigeria and ask me to sow 10 million. And God says, I'm only revealing to you your heart condition. You are not ready for 1 million dollars. It will kill you by yourself. You see that? And then when you write that exam, one day in the place of prayer, you get to a point where a circumcision happens. No amount can latch onto your heart again. Then you will see doors that you did not pray for. They came in honor to your growth. Success is not what we look for. If you are looking for success, you are already wrong. It is what we attract to our lives by reason of who we become. Hmm. 
Are we learning? There shall be no loss. In the name of Jesus. I don't know anyone today who is occupying any position in honor and in destiny who has not written this exam in life. Tests and trials. My God. I remember a time in my life where I did everything right. Even today, looking from hindsight, I will still tell you I did everything right. Sometimes you've done all to do. Just wait. There's nothing else to do. Just wait. It's called the staying power. The ability to remain until harvest matures. When a farmer plants, imagine a farmer that one week later is just roaming around the farm and say, I, I don't know what kind of soil is this. It doesn't matter what kind of fertilizer. Even if you throw the seed inside the fertilizer, it will not grow automatically. When a woman takes in, from the day they tell her you are pregnant, does she say, baby, this is a special womb. Not even Jesus had that rush. He had to go through the season. There are certain things that are not demonic attacks. Process is a blessing. It helps you learn as you grow so you can bring others into the experience. Run away from those who manifested only faith and you do not find patience. It is faith and patience that obtains the promise. <laughs> Tests and trials. Apostle, why do I love the Lord? I was trusting that God would give me a car. This is September. I'm still trekking from my house to household of David. And I'm a faithful worker. And every time Pastor Shola keeps releasing blessings, people are coming with testimony. Yes! Count God faithful. He's teaching you how to love him in the midst of nothing. So that plenty will not affect your relationship. Who is learning? If you only thank God because there is plenty, you are a hypocrite. You must know how to kneel down in plenty or nothing. So that those who look at you will not even know the difference. They don't know when there's food or there's no food. Because your praise never changes. Your prayer never changes. Your consecration never changes. Your passion never changes. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord. I want to say something and please do not misunderstand me. Be careful as you desire to help men. There are times that in a bid to help men, you will abort seasons of training. Don't let compassion, Satan can use compassion as a weapon to destroy the making of a champion. Did you hear what I said? This is not to fuel greed, but there are people you want to help and you feel a restraint. Honor it. God knows what he's doing. Let the man trek to church. There is something he needs to know. That man trekking to church is going to be a pastor over 5,000 people with a hundred branches. If he cannot build his faith, refine through fire. Don't over pamper people into weakness. Let them grow. Let them learn God. Let them know what it means to command blessings without a job. Don't over pamper people. You don't like what I've said? Sorry, oh, you invited me here. Let me tell you, if you say there's no loss, I'm showing you the dynamics. My God, when you call people generals, they have been forged through the fires of affliction. There are people who don't fear trouble. They died sins. Sins. Only those who are alive here. And men don't die twice. It is appointed unto all men to die once. You will choose the kind of death you will die. Hmm. Are we together? There are some of you, someone just insults you and you are crying around and you are saying, God, use me around the nations. God said, no, no, my, my dear son. No, no. One insult and you are crying and you want God to grant you the anointing. <laughs> are we together? Ah, someone prophesied, say, I will grow. Say it again, I will grow. My God. There are men like Paul in prison. Paul was never, I do not find any time in prison where Paul was specifically asking God to bring him out of prison. He was not even concerned. In prison, he was thinking about the church. 
I hear that you guys are misbehaving. Just to let you know, I will soon come out. And when I come out, I will pass through your streets. Paul for you. What sort of a man is that? Peter came out. I mean, if you were bound like Peter, as soon as you come out, you will leave and say, God, I'm going on one year sabbatical. I will come back, but I need to rest. The Bible says, as soon as he showed himself to them, I've come out. He left them praying and went to the next assignment. These were men who God built. Let me tell you why our generation of Christians are weak. There is something we need to adjust about our theology. Our theology is responsible for our weakness. Are we together? The way to the throne is the cross. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. When you find people in the prison, don't be quick to talk. You may be talking about Joseph. Not everybody in the prison is a criminal. Not everybody on the tree. There were two thieves, not three thieves. One was a savior, two were thieves. So when you see everybody going through seasons of tragedy, don't conclude that it's because their prayer lives went down. Don't conclude. Are we together now? There are people who are writing their exams. When you come to an exam hall, the first thing they write is no noise, no phones, no nothing. Only a foolish student will be browsing during exams. You drop that thing there, even at home, because you are writing your final medical exam. It can determine whether you'll be called doctor or something else. For some of you, you are in a season. As a man of God, you love God. The people you have trained are already in ministry, and God is saying, wait behind. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing? Wait. Okay, at least let me let my friends invite me so I can get a little encouragement. And God says, that's what I want to kill. That your purpose for ministry is honorarium. It's not me that you will serve that way. Wait, let me deal with you and bring that circumcision. A day comes, you say, God, even though you slay me, I will trust you. And God says, you pass the exam. You can go now. You can go now. For some of you, during that time of tests and trials, God cuts away envy. He cuts away flesh. He cuts away, you see that now? No stamina. I've watched a lot of people because we're in Zaria. I watched a lot of people pass through the military school. And some of those guys, you will see them so weak. And as soon as they cross that gate, sometimes they can start booting them. And their parents almost want to say, come out, don't worry. We'll go to one mission school. And you will see the frail child. And you are almost like, what kind of officer is this? Give him five years. When you watch that child, the, the sickly, fearful child, five years of in military training and you see him he doesn't fear they say they are shooting around and he's just smiling at civilians something has happened to him there is an engineering God is doing in your mind to help you survive the end times don't just cry and keep binding and casting everything man of God stay you are not the first who went to preach without honorarium don't let bitterness kill you it's too early stay and learn apostle I think I'm too anointed to be an usher and God says, go and be an usher. Then they post you to scrub toilets. And you look at yourself and say, I was a campus president. Abba! And the people that I led are still in that church. God says, do it. Do it. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till you look just like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till your life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising sons and daughters in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till I look just like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till my life looks like him. Prophesy to someone, say stay. Say stay. Say hold on. Tell him build stamina yes sir the journey is far don't be in a hurry to get into ministry you will preach and preach and preach and preach in two months all your sermons will finish that's when you will know what it means to cry to god for grace don't be in a hurry keep building that bank eat for the journey is far the journey is to the nations eat when god is saying don't worry keep eating I don't know why I'm staying here, but this is a prophetic word for someone. 
Don't compare yourself with others and say, look what God is doing and I'm still here. No. The description of your destiny is such that you will be an envy to the nations. Your training cannot be the same. Mary, realize that you are carrying the Savior, not a baby. So when you see God training you and your training is unusual, like no other woman, don't fight it. It is because you are highly favored. That is God's definition of favor. That you are exempted from several things. The Bible says, Paul teaching that the parts of the body that are considered more glorious are hidden. There are many of you who crave for visibility and there is a place for that. The reason why God is hiding you is because of the kind of honor that is going to be poured upon your life. He's preparing you like a trophy. When he's done, the nations will see an example of what a yielded vessel looks like. Are you learning? Praise the name of the Lord. Let me give you the final one and then we'll pray. Is someone ready to receive tonight? In Tests and trials. Count it all joy. This is a message for someone. Go back home rejoicing. And they ask you, have you finally gotten the job? No, but I got something greater than a job. I got a revelation in my spirit. And sometimes the devil can use men to mock you and say, this church you are going all the time. Huh? allow men of God to keep deceiving you because it looks like something is wrong with your head and one day you will say it's true and God says no, that's an exam you're about to fail 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 apostle what do I do now that I don't have a job it's an opportunity to pray because the kind of job God will give you you won't be able to do all that 10 hours you are talking about again. So use the time to build while you are waiting. Build while you are waiting. Build while you are waiting. You get up in the morning while you are trusting God for job. You are reading books. You are praying in the spirit. You will look like a fool for many years. But when God is done preparing you, he will lift you like a trophy. The finest of them. In the name of Jesus, may someone here receive the staying power. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness. Household of David, hear me. John ordained to be the greatest of all prophets, but he remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. There is such a thing as your season of appearing. Number five, number six. The sixth, and that will be the final reason why believers experience losses, is direct demonic attacks demonic attacks sometimes it is just it is not tests and trials it is not carelessness it is not ignorance it is not lack of discernment it is that you are in a season where the name of what is happening to you is a demonic attack even jesus said satan cometh to me make no mistakes he will come what happens after he comes is where victory will be defined or otherwise but as to whether he will come, he will come home. He came to Jesus even while praying and fasting. It was even the prayer and fasting that brought him. He waited as soon as Jesus was done praying and fasting. The first person he met was Satan. There are times it is not sin that brings Satan. It's the depth of your consecration. It rises as an incense in the spirit. And the realm of the spirit will have to say, let's go and check who is this person loving God and standing in faithfulness. We need to come and find out that there is a formation of a great destiny here. Let's abort it before manifestation. John 10.10, 10, Satan is given a name that everyone must know. The thief, not a friend. The thief, he cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy not or that means he can do all three in one life he can steal and kill and destroy but jesus said i am come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly is someone learning first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 please give it to us first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 my god i sense a very strong anointing in this place now first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 be sober let's read together 
Be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, uh -huh. seeking whom he may devour. Satan for you. He has that kind of determination. The probability that he will come around the corridors of your destiny is 100%. 100%. Sooner or later, you will collide with the onslaught of darkness. They will come through wicked men, unreasonable men. They will come through systems that are antichrist. The Bible calls the believer a warrior. The fight of faith is not just for receiving. There is something called the shield of faith. You don't use it to receive. You use it to defend. Most people only know faith as a tray that they use to drop things and receive things. There is a dimension of faith that is not just for obtaining promises. It's for defending the speakings of God. The shield of faith is part of the whole armor of God. There is such a thing as the armor of God. The breastplate of righteousness. Remember? The sword of the spirit. The shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts my god let me tell you in my life as a man of god i have seen demonic attacks i have seen demonic attacks demonic attacks there are seasons where hell just schemes over your life and says you know what whatever can be done this 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 woman the kind of child she's raising if we leave this child this child is going to bring two million, two billion souls to the kingdom. Let's do everything we can do to destroy this family. And some of you will say, who did I offend? I'm giving you the answer now. It's not about offending anybody. It's about being at the epicenter of God's program. There are many of you, Satan knows more about your destiny than you. So before you even learn it, he attacks you. His attack is proof of what he's seen. Satan does not waste his time. If you see him insisting on you, there is something he has seen that you have not yet seen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah, the Bible says now, thanks be to God. We're about to pray. Shalana oh. kaparata. Thanks be to God. Attacks. You get up in the morning as a mother and all of a sudden they send you a text. Somebody said you spread this against your MD. And they say your services are no longer needed. Nobody even allowed you to explain. It's not an issue of unrighteousness. An attack through men. There are men in scripture called wicked and unreasonable men. The same way God said, I have found David my servant. Satan has also found men. And he uses them. Hallelujah. Oh, can you sign this? Add two zeros. And then whatever I will come to us and you say, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm a Christian. What does that mean? So me, I'm a what? And because of that, they begin to plot it. And one day, they will say, you blinked your eye. And because of that, you are going out of that office. Hmm. There was a man in the Bible called Daniel. On account of his consecration and his prayer, he was creating an effect in Babylon. And the people came together. They said, you know what? We need to do something about this guy. But we cannot say we are attacking him. So what we will do is we will route it through a law. A law. This is why believers must have influence. Let's go through the parliament and enact a law. Let's say it is for everybody. But we are looking for one man. And Daniel continued, he opened the gates towards Jerusalem in honor to the prayer of Solomon that everyone who looks towards Jerusalem and prays that God should hearken. And it, the people were desperate. They opened the door and they said, finally, we found him. And the king said, now I've been bound by this. I, I don't want to... Ah, in every kingdom, there is Esther. In every kingdom, there is Haman. In every kingdom, there is Mordecai. Did you hear what I said? Don't make a mistake because everybody is calling you king of the Jews. Check well. Among that crowd, there is Mordecai who will save you. In, in all that crowd, there is Esther, a deliverer. In all that crowd, there is Haman. Haman's plot was not to kill the Jews. Haman's ultimate plot was to kill the king. Don't think the plot was just the Jews. Every time he saw the king's horses, so when the king called him and said, there's a man I want to honor. He said, ah, I didn't know it would come this cheap. 
Let him ride on the king's chariot. Uh -huh. Out of the abundance of the heart. He had desired it. And he said, all right, set the table. But you will not be one, the one to eat from it. And he went heartbroken. Discussed it with his wife. And the wife said, from where is that man? He says, a Jew. He said, ah, this is only the beginning. It means you are still going to die. You have not touched a man. You have touched a covenant. For someone let me speak to you the bible said he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not mine anointed in the name of jesus from today anyone who fights you goes down instantly anyone who fights you goes down instantly anyone who fights you goes down instantly you see when a man looks at you and says, over my dead body, if you love the person, start praying quickly for the person. Because that is, that is a careless use of words. Over your dead body, do you know the covenants that support certain people? They are not standing alone. Over your dead body, for your child to rise. Above my own child. And the person didn't know you were coming for a conference like this. Didn't the person see the poster? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Now listen. For every kingdom reality, I'm not going to show you the solution now. I will leave the keys to restoration for tomorrow. But let me give you a teaser. The mystery of restoration is encapsulated in a parable called the parable of the lost coin. We'll look at that tomorrow. The Bible says that a woman had her treasures, 10 of them, and one was missing. And she showed us that restoration is possible. Mm. Yes, sir. But there are principles. The first thing the Bible says the woman did was to light a candle. You will never find the coin that is missing in darkness. The first thing she did was to light a candle. The second thing she did was to get a broom. I know it is within this vicinity. I don't know where exactly. But the, uh, the, a broom has the ability to sweep within a defined area. And the Bible says she started sweeping. Maybe under the carpet. Maybe somewhere. But the first thing she did was to light the candle. And once she swept it, eventually she found it. And she called on her neighbors and said, rejoice with me. Restoration has happened. Is someone ready to pray tonight? Now please listen. For the few minutes that we have, I want you to participate fully. Because for someone, you are the edge of your testimony already. There are things that must happen in your life tonight. Are you ready to pray? In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray? Let me show you one scripture. Hopefully, and then we'll pray. Psalms 116 verse 8. It's a scripture, I just had to add it. In fact, we're we are doing a fasting and prayer tomorrow and it's one of the scriptures that we're using back home and the Lord just placed it in my heart to bring that scripture here tonight. We're going to pray it. Please shout it as loud as you can. One, two, go. One more time. These are three kinds of problems you must pray to never come to your life. You can be alive and yet you are crying. It says you deliver my soul from death but it does not stop there. My eyes from tears and my feet from falling. Who is ready to pray this prayer? To deliver my soul from death. To deliver my eyes from tears. To deliver my feet from falling. Go ahead and pray. Oh, 
Chate la bareka paradosia. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He will put his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Someone go ahead and pray. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He will put his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Salaka barakata brandaka barakata. Someone take a minute to pray. Helaka barakata lekapa. You deliver my soul from death. You deliver my eyes from tears. You deliver my feet from falling. Ena mashena makata laka parakata. Rakata pranda kapereke parato sadiga la pada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please don't be tired of praying. Exodus 14:15. This is a prophetic word for someone. My God, some shackles are about to be broken right now. Exodus 14 15. I like us to read it together. Ready? Read. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Tell the household of David that they go forward. Someone say, I go forward. Turn it into prayer. Begin to pray. I go forward. Come on, do we have believers here? Pray. I go forward. I go forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. I make progress. Scaling heights in the spirit. Scaling heights in ministry. Scaling heights in destiny. I go forward. I go forward. The Red Sea notwithstanding. I go forward. Pharaoh's chariots notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 18. We're praying. Isaiah 41 verse 18. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land a spring of water. That every dryness in my life in the name of Jesus, let there be restoration. Let the desert land become a pool of water. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, believers. Ale barada ga baraka parusa taba sharakata Please pray please pray Saleka perekotos Kraparanto solo goto bakarebedekade In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus Jeremiah 30 verse 17 I want to use this opportunity to pray for the sick now and as the river flows, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right 
Hallelujah. Listen to me. We're going to read this scripture shortly. But I believe with all my heart that there are people tomorrow I will teach you four levels of restoration. There is the restoration of time. There is the restoration of things. I will give you the remaining two tomorrow. There are people what you need to be restored is time. Time has gone. What does it mean to restore time? To bring life into your years. Because when time passes and you cannot justify achievements within that time, it's called retrogression, it's called delay. I have, I, I'm sure that many of you may still remember that I've taught you here that there are two ways that God gives men dominion over time. The first is called speed. The second is called restoration. When God wants to help you, he brings both. Speed and restoration. Speed and restoration. Are we together? Yeah. So there is the restoration of things. There is the restoration of time. What does it mean for things to be restored? Alas, master, for it was borrowed. That was not an issue of time. They lost something. Are we together now? Yes. There is restoration of conditions or opportunities. By this time tomorrow, it was a restoration of a state. I'm saying this because we are going to pray. My God, I just see like rain. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. It's rain falling. Let's read it together and I'm going to pray for the sick. I have a few minutes. I beg for a few minutes. One to go. I will restore health to you. And I will heal thee of their wounds. Listen. He said because they have called you an outcast. Saying although you are Zion. No man is placing a demand upon you. you. If you want to understand this. You need to know what happened to sick people. In ancient times. They were alienated. They did not stay in the city. Are we together? They stayed outside of the city. And if they saw people passing. They would have to cry unclean. In other words, don't touch me. So the Bible says, I need to bring you healing. There is something, there is a cancer. It may not be physical, but there is a demonic embargo upon you that those who can place a demand, when they see you, they go away from you. Even though you are the Zion of God, I will heal you. So as I'm praying for the sick, you may not be sick in your body, but anything in your life that can impede your progress, you're a man of God, greatly anointed, but there's no one placing a demand on that grace. You are God's Zion. Please give us NIV. But yet, in spite of the fact that you are his Zion, no man seeks after you. He said, I will restore to you health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. Please place your hand right now. Don't trivialize the healing ministry. If you are sick in your body, please lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. You believe God for a genuine miracle, not games. Please place your hand there. There's no reason why you should go back with whatever infirmity you came. And you can stand in for someone. You can stand in for someone. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Some of you, it's high blood pressure. And that thing has refused to go. Some of you may be cancer. Some of you may be what, some infirmity, eye conditions, skin conditions, blood conditions.
place your hand there I will restore healing is a an expression of restoration bringing your body back to the state that should be so that you can serve the purposes of God I want to pray for you right now please look at me how do you receive healing number one by the hearing of faith prophetic words are going to come be healed when you hear that word it's not an empty word number two you receive before you have receiving is a spiritual reality you don't receive with your hands no you cannot have what you have not received the bible says in mark 11 24 it said verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them many do not have because they have not received you receive by faith you receive in joy you receive with thanksgiving and then you have father in the name of jesus i stand in faith with every vessel of god here represented and i pray that every spirit that is behind any infirmity i'm about to rebuke those spirits now in the name of jesus i declare that anyone here who is under the influence of any strange spirit sponsoring sicknesses and infirmities in the name of jesus be set free now in the name of Jesus, be set free now. In the name of Jesus, every spirit, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, in the name of Jesus, back pain be healed. Back pain. Anyone with back pain, I declare be healed now. Be healed now. The Lord is healing someone of back pain. Be healed now. Be healed now. Anyone with any growth. Palataka parata. I'm seeing fire. Growths. I just mentioned growths and I saw fire. Anyone carrying any lump, any growth in the name of Jesus, let it dissolve now. Let it dissolve now. Let it dissolve now. Let it dissolve now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, every blood condition, whatever is wrong with your blood, may your blood be cleansed now. In the name of Jesus there's someone you have a very severe pain you are not blind but you have severe pain around your left eye just where I'm pointing in the name of Jesus Christ wherever you are the power of God is touching you now Amen. hallelujah one two three the anointing of the spirit is coming on three people I'll continue praying but I just saw like light fire one two three and the Lord is saying is coming on you for the sake of your family this is not even for you three people I know people are receiving but there are three people in the name of Jesus wherever you are I'm praying that that glory that weight that Shekinah may it rest upon your destiny now now I decree and declare someone has a shoulder pain very severe pain your right shoulder there's severe pain let the power of God touch you right where you are if you are here there's there's a gentleman the left side your left just around your kneecap your kneecap there's severe pain you can't climb like a ladder you have to rest before you complete that journey in the name of jesus wherever you are the power of god is touching you right now touching you right now touching you right now is there a name like bumijo Bumijo. Bumijo. I don't know what that means. Bumijo. Maybe a name, somebody's name. Whether you are here or connecting online. Bumijo. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. The Lord is saying he's releasing a job for someone with the name Bumijo. What God says to one, he says to all. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, whether you are here or you are following online. 
in the name that is above all names i decree and declare may my god surprise you Amen. now please hear me i don't want us to be careless with this i'm working on borrowed time and my apologies if you are in this place and you have gone through strange seasons of tragedy we don't have the time to bring you out but i want you to lift your hands where you are i want to speak over your life like you know that this has been a demonic onslaught something is about to come upon you i want to pray for you you will be surprised at what god will do in your life from today lift your hands tragedies you have lost things a job an opportunity i want to speak it over your life in the name that is above all names between now and november i decree it as a word of prophecy by the power that raised christ from the dead begin to record restoration testimonies between now and november in the name of jesus begin to record restoration testimonies restoration testimonies restoration testimonies restoration testimonies help them restoration testimonies in the name of jesus christ hallelujah in the name of jesus please bring for me the person now who shouts loud under the anointing i just saw fire loud under the anointing my apologies for our time just allow me to do my thing i know i'm working with limited time but this is by the spirit of god please if you can bring there's a reason why i ask you to bring it. Hallelujah. Who is called Bumi? Bumi. I'm hearing the name Bumi. That should be maybe B U M. There's somebody here called Bumi. Let me just speak to you. Sir, my, my sincere apologies. Bumi. Is there someone like that? Please make sure you verify. Is there any protocol to help us so that we don't have people? Please, if your name is not Bumi, just go back to your seat. You are still receiving. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Who works in UBA? United Bank for Africa. UBA. I just saw the logo of UBA and the Lord is telling me to speak increase. This has to do with promotion. Who is that? UBA. Is there someone like that? Come and receive your promotion by faith. UBA. You work in UBA. You're a member of this church? You work in UBA. I'm not saying you work in a bank, you work in UBA. If you work in a bank, you can receive from your seat. UBA. Are we together? Do you believe in the power of prophecy? Look, not everybody is fake. -o. Let me tell you straight to the point. Don't think that everybody is fake. No. Don't trivialize the investment in the spirit. The power of God is coming on one of you who is on the line now. I just saw like oil. Just coming on the head of one of you. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the lion and the lamb. Young lady. Look at me. The power of God is coming upon you. I cost that influence. Everything responsible for backwardness. Out of her life now. In the name of Jesus. Behold the lion and the lamb. You be a, In the name of Jesus, I place a grace upon you. By the election of grace, by the mercies of God, I decree and declare, hence you have come out in the public, you will come and stand on this altar and testify. It will be evident through your life that God is a lifter of men. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bring destiny, help us, that will cause you to go forward. 
in the name of Jesus hallelujah you have applied for visa one two three four times it didn't work there's someone God is showing me four times maybe for sake of time if we ask you to come the, the anointing is come please help I don't know who that person is the Lord is saying I should speak to you that you are entering your season of rest that person you are entering it will it will surprise you what God is able to do you are entering your season of rest I speak it to you in the name of Jesus I'm hearing ministry in Ibadan ministry in Ibadan I don't know if there's any pastor from Ibadan ministry in Ibadan you are a pastor from where your own ministry you work with somebody okay I, I will pray for you but I, this is I'm seeing like an overseer someone who is doing a work but it is Ibadan perhaps the person is falling online or maybe the person will listen by way of rebroadcast in the name of Jesus whoever that person is I want to pray for the person I'm not I'm not a prophet of doom but I'm praying for the person because I'm seeing an accident with an SUV. This is what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing that the person will not survive it. And that they have to raise the person's son to continue, to take over. In the name of Jesus, we are praying right now. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we agree. Ministry, I don't know what pastor or what overseers that is. But by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we declare life to that ministry life to that individual life to that ministry life to that individual hallelujah sir i would have told you in secret but the lord is saying i should tell you in the open i'm seeing you and your wife meeting some indians indians i don't know what this is about but it's going to be a major door indians this is what i would have said it in the office but the lord is saying i should say it in the open so that the members who hear indians i don't know whether it is business whether it's ministry but i know that is for your lifting indians i'm seeing a man and his wife and a daughter in the name of jesus every blessing that will come to this church and come to his servant as a result of that encounter may it be replicated in your own life in the name of jesus christ i pray for my sisters here by the power that raised christ from the dead why am I hearing the name Ekiti State? Ekiti State. Ekiti State. I pray for you. Any disaster coming from Ekiti, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, it returns back to hell. I'm saying it again. Any bad news that is coming from Ekiti to someone, because of this restoration service, it returns back to hell. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are in front here, I stretch my hands towards you and I decree and declare for the various reasons. I don't know what it is that the Lord brought you out here for, but one by one, may the Lord sort your lives. One by one, may the Lord sort your destinies. In the name of Jesus, I'm, God bless you. Return. To, please, I'm led to pray for someone. Your sister has a child with autism. Your sister, not you. Your sister has a child with autism. You are the person? I'm going to pray. Where is she? She's in Ife. With autism? Yes, her first son has autism. Oluwa Jomiloju. What's the name? Oluwa Jomiloju. That's the boy's name. I'm sorry. Sometimes, you know, we probe people like this because we just want to make sure that people are not playing games and saying all of that. So I hope you're not embarrassed. Right? What of your sister has a child with autism? From where? It's in Ikorodu. Ikorodu. How about you, madam? my sister is in Asaba. I'm going to pray. We are going to agree. How many of you know that the Lord is do you know I truly believe I may be wrong but this autistic thing is an attack on a generation. This is not a medical thing. The devil wants to produce a generation of children who are not correct because whether you like it or not one day their parents will go to be with the Lord. It's an attack. In the name of Jesus can I speak over someone? When lady here, lay your hands on your womb and declare that in the name of Jesus, you will never give birth to a child that will cause you pain. 
you will never give birth to a child that will be the reason for your sorrow you will not be like the mother of Jabez in the name of Jesus and I pray for everyone here whether you have children or they are yet to arrive I decree and declare healthy children healthy children healthy children healthy children healthy children in the name of Jesus let me request maybe as a second to the last function please let's stretch our hands over this people in one minute pray like you are praying for your own child we are speaking as a family of faith if God identified them tonight it's because he wants to help them and for someone who is following online we are praying right now believing God for healing for autistic children father you are able to save to the uttermost bring health and cure bring health and cure rehabilitate the minds of these children those with speech problems those with hearing problems those with coordination problems in the name of jesus be healed 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 hallelujah i declare by the power of the holy spirit you have all come here by faith in the name of jesus that is the same way you will come out to testify may the lord honor his word concerning your life in jesus name please return back rejoicing return back rejoicing now everyone please lend me your attention i want to give someone an opportunity right now to know jesus our time is spent but I cannot allow that we return back. Please keep standing, everyone. Let's honor the altar call. An altar call is not a funeral service. It's an opportunity to help someone know Jesus. This is part of the initial mandate of every man of God. In order of priority, it is the greatest. Every time you have a people gathered like this, I saw other people outside. The Lord himself adds daily as many who should be saved now please listen to me my dear brother my dear sister it pays to know jesus then to love jesus then to serve jesus you cannot love a god you do not know and you cannot truly serve a god you do not love so it starts with knowing him then loving him then living for him i want to use this one minute to give someone an opportunity you are saying apostle if you will let me I am ready unashamedly to make that declaration and for someone here you are saying well I remember making this call but in all honesty I cannot say my work with God is intact I need restoration he says restore unto me the joy of salvation I'm going to count one to five wherever you are don't be ashamed don't wait for anyone to be the first I want you to leave your seat and run to come and stand here as an act of faith that you are serious with Jesus where are those who need Jesus I begin my counting now let's encourage them as they come one two if there are those coming from outside please protocol let me request that you allow them come when the front is full then we allow them to stay wherever they are if you are coming please rush make haste three household of david let's encourage them as they come come four apostle i want to come but i'm not sure if i'm saved join them you can have tonight the assurance of salvation. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Celebrate salvation. I see people coming from outside. Household of David, are you celebrating what God is doing? I see people coming from outside. God bless you. 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 Male and female, God bless you. Young and old, God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, please, let me have your attention, all of you. If you are yet to receive a sleep, I see counselors passing a sleep. You can lift your hand if you are yet to receive a sleep and a counselor will just pass you that sleep. 
Um, I know you are completing the form, but let me ask you to pause for one moment. Please pause for one moment. Thank you very much for making this noble decision for Jesus. And let me speak to those who are watching by way of television, watching by way of the internet. When it has to do with the business of salvation, it applies to you. Distance is no barrier at all. Do not receive healing and then leave Jesus out. You made a bad bargain. It is better to not be healed and to receive Jesus. He is the guarantee that healing will come. But if you receive healing and other miracles and you leave Jesus out, it was a poor bargain. As I lead these ones to make this salvation prayer, please join them. Perhaps in your home, you're watching a rebroadcast again. Every moment provided you are alive is convenient enough to make Jesus Lord of your life. For those of us who are here, my brothers and sisters, thank you for making this noble decision. Let me request that you lift your right hand. I see our mother coming. Mama, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Say after me loud and say it very clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ upon the confession of your faith, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The grace to live the victorious Christian life I release upon you right now. And I declare that from tonight you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Now, please, all of you, look at me. I will want you to go to my left. That will be your right from where you are. There are counselors who have a word with you. They will pray with you. And then you'll be able to complete your form. Let's honor them as they go. Let's honor them as they go. Keep clapping. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. For someone here, by tomorrow morning, you are returning to church with your restoration testimony. This is not an empty confession. I speak it to a believer. I speak it to a receiver. May the Lord coordinate the forces of heaven for your sake this night. That you will wake up tomorrow into a restoration testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I hope to see you in church tomorrow. We're going to have a great time again. Still dealing with the business of restoration. But for tonight, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Maximizing your destiny. A call to fulfill God's purpose. Beloved. Today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119.105 Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29.11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing Your Identity in Christ To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, 
or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3 5 Tark 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you, but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel One of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said in Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying Focused on the Eternal Perspective As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen.
Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.